Amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. It's always a pleasure to come before God's people in God's house on God's day. What a blessing it is. He has allowed us to get through the 11 months of 2023, the 19th of November. Less than a month and a half, and we've been a new year. What a God we serve and how he has brought us through. Most Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. It's only by your grace and your mercy that we are standing here today. I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for opening up my eyes that I can see another day. Thank you for another day that I can get closer to you. Thank you for another day that I can love and be with my family. Thank you that I can be with my church family. Oh, Heavenly Father, you have been with us, and we know that you have brought us through, and you're going to continue to be with us. We will trust and have faith in your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. In your most precious son, Jesus Christ's name, I say thank you, God. In our uh, absence of our pastor, I just say uh, we miss you and we pray for for him and his wife uh, vacation as they are away from us. I thank uh, Minister Joe for giving me an opportunity to stand before you today. Thank you, my brother. And I'm going to get right into our text. I'll be coming out of Genesis 25. (coughs) Genesis 25, verses 7 through 11. Whatever translation you have, just read along. I'll be reading out of the NASB translation. And my translation reads, These are all the years of Abraham's life that he lived. 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died in a ripe old age an old man, and satisfied with life. That satisfied means that he had no regrets. He died at peace. Mm. He died with, uh, satisfied with life, and he was gathered to his people. Verse 9. Then his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, facing Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried with Sarah, his wife. Mm -hmm. It came about after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac lived by Baalahoi Roy. It says in verse 11, and it came about after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son. Notice that God is blessing Isaac in verse 11. uh, Verse 5 wasn't in my text, but it is part of the lesson. In verse 5 it said, now Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. Isaac was blessed in in verse 5 by uh, by his father Isaac. Abraham, and also by God in verse 11. Uh And the title of my text is, The Patriarchs and Matriarchs of Our Faith. The Patriarchs and Matriarchs of Our Faith. We all know who the Patriarchs are. God visited uh, Abraham in chapter 11. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their wives are the matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, and uh, Leah. I won't forget Rachel, but uh, 
those are the patriarchs and the matriarchs of our faith. In Bible study, there's a thing called the law of proportion. It basically says that you can tell how important certain subjects are in the Bible by how much space is devoted to it. Let's take, for example, the book of Genesis. <clears throat> we know that the book of Genesis has 50 chapters in it. Now, what do you think about when you think of the book of Genesis? We think about the creation. We think about Adam and Eve, yep. the Garden of Eden, yep. the fall of man. We think about Cain and Abel. Yeah, yeah. We think about Noah. We think about the great flood. All right. We also think about the beginning of the nations and the confusion of the languages <coughs> at the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Those are the things we think about when we think about the book of Genesis. Yep. Yet, but the truth of it all is all of these events I just mentioned are compressed into 11 short chapters. Instead, the book of Genesis, chapters 12 through 50, over 39 chapters, the first 11 chapters are devoted to those momentous events. But chapters 12 through 50, the 39 chapters, are entirely devoted to just four men and their families, the patriarchs, <clears throat> Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and his two wives, Rachel and Leah, right. and also Joseph is included in those chapters. All right. All right. And how God had worked through these four men and their families to accomplish his purpose. Clearly, the emphasis in the book of Genesis is not on those big events, the writer Moses was saying, by the way, this is how all of these things happen. <clears throat> but here's what really happened. Here's what really is important. How God fulfilled his plan of redemption through these four families of the law of proportion, the patriarchs, and the matriarchs of our faith. All right. <clears throat> Come on, folks. Verse 7 says, these are all the years of Abraham's life that he lived 175 years old. All right. <clears throat> we know that when God called Abraham, his name was April, exalted father. All right. And later on in that chapter, he would get a name change to Abraham, All right. which, is, which is father of the multitude. If, and if anyone ever paid attention, out of the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, two of them received name changes, April to Abraham and Jacob to Israel, but Isaac's name was never changed. Why is that? If you read through the book of Genesis, the reason why Isaac don't get a name change is because God himself named Isaac when he was born. He didn't name April. The parents named him. He didn't name Jacob. The parents named him. But he personally named Isaac. So out of the patriarchs, that's the only one that don't get a name change. <clears throat> Abraham was 75 years old when God called him in Genesis 11 and 26. From Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. So Abraham lived a century, 100 years after God called him. Because our Bible says he died at 175. Yeah. Right. He was called at 75 years old. Yeah. Abraham lived 100 years after God called him. It says that in verse 7, he lived 175 years. Abraham after God asked Abraham to leave his country, his family, and from his father's house to go to a land that God would show him, God made three promises to Abraham. At that time, it was Abram upon his obedience. The first promise was the nation promise. God said in Genesis 2, 12 and 2, I will make of thee a great nation. 
The nation promise was fulfilled in the, in the book of Exodus. The descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob numbered a great multitude when Moses led them out of Egypt, the land of their bondage. That was the first promise he, he, uh, God gave him. The second promise was the land promise. God said in Genesis 12 and 7, Until thy seed, I will give this land. The land promise was fulfilled in the book of Joshua. Under the leadership of Joshua, the descendants of Abraham conquered and occupied the land of Canaan. And the third promise God promised to Abraham, if he was obedient to his call, was the spiritual promise. That's in 12, Genesis 12 and 3, and it reads, In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The spiritual promise was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. All spiritual blessings are from God the Father in Jesus Christ, yes. the Son of God, a descendant of Abraham. My, my, my. Jesus even said in John 8 and 56, Jesus, when he was speaking to the Jewish uh, leaders, he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it, and he was glad. Then Jesus said, uh, then Jesus said to him, you are, they, they were saying to Jesus, you are not even yet 50 years old. And how have you seen Abraham? All right, all right. All right. Jesus said he was happy to see my day coming. Yeah. That was the spiritual promise. Yeah. Verse 8 reads, <clears throat> Abraham breathed his last and died in a ripe old age and satisfied with life. He was satisfied with his life and at peace with dying. And he was gathered to his people. Notice verse uh, 8 says, Abraham was gathered to his people. As I was studying that, it don't mean that he just died. His body died, but his soul didn't die. His body died, but his soul didn't die. When Luke, in Luke, when Jesus was, gave us the parable, the rich man and the Lazarus, you remember he said the poor, the poor, the poor man was in Abraham's bosom. That's where they get that from. And the rich man was went to Hades. Yeah. See, they didn't know about heaven and hell like the New Testament saints do. Yes, we, we would further learn. That's true. But he was gathered to his people. Not only was Abraham gathered to his people, if you read in uh, Genesis 25 and 8, that's the one where he was gathered to his people. Read in Genesis 35 and 29, not only was Abraham gathered, it says in 35 and 29, so Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his son Esau and Jacob buried him. So not only was Abraham gathered, Isaac was gathered. And also in Genesis 49 and 33, it reads, and when Jacob had finished commanding his son, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last, and he was gathered to his people. Abraham was gathered, Isaac was gathered, and Jacob was gathered to his people, the patriarchs and matriarchs of our faith. Verse 9 reads, Then his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah. Now, the last time Isaac and, Jake, or Isaac and Ishmael was together was back in Genesis 21. They hadn't been together since Genesis 21. They come back together to bury their father, Isaac and Ishmael buried their father. You remember when Sarah got jealous of Hagar? Yeah, yeah, it was two incidents. In 16, it said that she, she was displeased 
with her, uh, the, uh, Sarah was the, uh, sir, the master. So she told Abraham, you need to get, her, get rid of her. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham said, do what you want. She's your slave. Yeah. So next the Bible says, Sarah treated her harshly yeah. and she left. Yeah. She didn't kick her out. For those who think that Sarah, uh, Hagar got kicked out, she left in chapter 16. But then again in chapter 21, Abraham was throwing a party for Isaac because he was about to be weaned. Like I said, the last time they was together. And upon him getting weaned, the Bible said that when Sarah looked at Ishmael, he mocked. Isaac. She wasn't pleased with that. She said, I will not have him in this house with the promised seed, Isaac. Abraham put him out. It was displeasing to Abraham, so he had to go to God. That was his only son until they had, he had just had Isaac. You already preached. And you telling me to put my son out? Go to God, son. He had to go to God. God said, listen to your wife and do what she say. Ooh, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. So she put, Abraham put them out at that time. And that was the last time he seen his brother. And at that time, he was 13 years old, Ishmael and Isaac was just born, and normal time of weaning was from three years to five years. And if it was at five years old, now it says, uh, at this time, Ishmael is 89, Isaac is uh, 75. So they hadn't seen each other in over 70 years, but they come together to bury their dad. Isn't that sad, family? How many times do we, sometimes we don't even see our family Watch members till there was a funeral? Watch out now. Watch out now. We don't see them till there was a funeral. And even at the funeral, they're arguing about who's going to get what. The sister that lived in the house and took care of mama, the sister that come from out of town, she wants the house. But the sister that took care of mama or the brother that was taken to all her apartments, they want to put them out. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it goes. All right now, son. All right. Yeah, that's a song I remember that, uh, that lady she said about. You, you, we know that song where the, the son from out of town came in and tried to put mama out. But the, old, the other son who was there with the little raggedy Jeep in the car, they wanted to put him out. But he said, not mama. You ain't going to put out mama. She ain't going to no nursing home. I'm going to take care of mama. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham and Isaac, came, I mean, I like how they came together to bury their dad yeah. in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, facing Mamre. Right. The field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth, there Abraham was buried with Sarah, his wife. Mm. I did some study on the cave of Machpelah. Mm. And you can read about that in uh, chapter uh, 21 or 22. The cave of Machpelah in Hebron is the world's most ancient Jewish site and the second holiest place for the Jewish people. It's the second most holiest place of all in the world for the Jewish people. The first most holiest place is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem of Solomon's Temple and King Herod's refurbished temple during the life of Jesus Christ. Only the temple is second to the cave of Machpelah in Jerusalem. Now the Dome of the Rock sits there on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It's an Islamic shrine, but it's not a mosque. This site is very important to the Jews, to the Christians, and the Muslims. 
All three religious groups trace their heritage back to the patriarchs. And the matriarch, starting with the father of our faith, Abraham. Yes, these historic patrons in Jerusalem are very much known today. Just for the record, Jerusalem is the most destroyed, fought for, and rebuilt city in the history of humanity. This is where that cave is at, yeah. cave of Machpelah, where Abraham is buried with his wife. Sarah, Isaac is buried there with Rebekah. And Jacob is buried, th buried there with Leah. The only reason Rachel isn't there, because she died giving birth to, uh, to her son, Rob, Rob, uh, Benjamin. She gave birth to Benjamin, and that's where they buried her on the way when she had, when she had uh, birth to Benjamin. That's the only reason why she's not there. But Abraham is there, Isaac is there, and Jacob is there with all of their wives, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. That site has been rebuilt, conquered, and destroyed 52 times in history. It is, it is the full, and there, now it's in a full military war in Israel. This is without arguing the most violent city in the history of the world. And that's the most historic site to Christians, Muslims, and Jews. What is more, more shocking to me is that most of the violence in Israel and Jerusalem that they face come from three of the leading religious groups, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. These three groups are responsible for nearly all the violence in Israel and Jerusalem. This is the holy and sacred ground for the Jews because this is where Solomon built the temple for where their God resides with them here on earth. It's where the Ark of the Covenant was kept in the Holy of Holies, behind the curtains. That's, it. That's why it's important to the Jews. To, to the Muslims, the Temple Mount is important to them because they have the Dome of the Rock there, which is on top of the ruins of the Jewish Temple, and it sits over the cave of Machpelah. It sits over the cave. According to Muslim tradition, they believe this is the site where Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven in the seventh century. That's why it's important to them. And the Christians, the spot of the cave of Machpelah is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It's sacred to us because this is where Jesus taught, he healed, and walked often while he was on earth. This is the place where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected from. All of this is, is above the cave of the Machpelah. Just this is the holy ground for the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. All of the tension wars in Israel can be traced back to Genesis 12. Because when God made a promise to Abraham, he said that I will bless you and your seed. But we got to remember what happened. After 10 years, nothing happened. So the Bible says that when he was 86 years old, that's when Sarah said, Sleep with my handmaid. That's what she said. Right. Yeah. And out, out of that union came Ishmael. Yeah. Mm. He's the father of the descendants of the Arabs. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham's sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron. The field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. He, he was buried there with his wife, Sarah. There also is Isaac and Rebekah. And there also is Jacob and Leah. Just imagine, when everybody would go on tour, they want to go to the cave of Machpelah because the patriarchs and the matriarchs, all six of them are buried there today. Mm. Yes, the three patriarchs and matriarchs are all buried together in the second most holiest site on earth. All six of them were buried in the cave, and it's also called the Cave of the Patriarchs, the holiest place in the world. Remember what I said? 52 times it's been destroyed, conquered, and rebuilt. We know in Jesus' time, the Romans was controlling the Temple Mount. Even though the Jews had access and they could do what they want to do, it was controlled by the Romans. When the Romans took over Israel, they took over the site. When the western part of the Roman Empire fell 
and the eastern part remained known as the history of the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine was Christians. Then they took over the site. After the Byzantines, the site was of a Jewish synagogue into a Christian church where they allowed Jews and Christians to worship together until 614. This holy site in Jerusalem, 52 times been destroyed, rebuilt, and conquered. Right. In 637, the Arabs invaded Israel, and they took over the site, and they turned it into a mosque. In 1100, the Crusaders came back. They were Christians, and they kicked the Muslims out and turned it back into a church. It's going from the Christians to the Jews to the Muslims. Then in 1811-88, the Muslims came back and they kicked out the Christians and turned it back into a mosque. My, 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 my. Then in 1960, after the Six-Day War, the Israelis took over and they turned it back into a synagogue. Then in 1993, the Palestinians took over and they turned it back into a mosque. It's going from one hand to the other. Who has right to this land? The Muslims, the Christians, or the Jews. This site has been flipped over more than 52 times. Right today, the Muslims control the Temple Mount, and they have the Dome of the Rock there while the war is going on now in Israeli against Hamas. There is a wall in the middle of one half of the Jewish temple, and one half is Muslims. So if you go visit Israel, one side is for Muslims, one side is for Jews. The holiest site in in the, in the land, controlled by either the Muslims, Christians, or the Jews. So when you visit Jerusalem, you have to decide which side you will visit because you can't go to both. You can't go to the Muslim side. You can't go to the Israeli, uh, the Jew, Jews or the Muslims. You have to pick one side you're going to go in. Because the Welling Wall still stands, and that's where most of the Jews go to pray. Since 1968, there have been three bombings and five active shootings that have left hundreds of people dead. In 1994, the Hebron bombing, when an Israeli suicide bomber entered the site, he set off a bomb and killed 29 Muslims who were in peaceful prayer right on that site. The most holiest site and the most violent uh, bloodshed. Why so much fighting and bloodshed over a cemetery spot? that holds the remains of six people, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Rebecca, Jacob, and Leah. Why? Because it's, it's, it is the resting place of Abraham, the father of our faith. Abraham is critical to the Jews, Christians, and the Muslims. All three groups fight to, change, to claim the rights to Abraham land that God promised him in Genesis 12. Yeah. The Jews trace their lineage back to Abraham through uh, through, the, through, uh, is through Abraham, through the patriarch Abraham, mm -hmm. they, from Abraham to Sarah, mm -hmm. because I, they, 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 they trace this to Sarah because it goes to Isaac and then to Jacob, then to the 12 tribes. All right. but, under, but understand this. The Muslims trace theirs back to Abraham, to uh, Hagar, to Ishmael. That's, they claim their right to the site. So we are, they're always fighting, one saying, all of them claim Abraham, but one is Sarah and Isaac, and the other one is Hagar and Ishmael. Lord have mercy. All, right. all that fighting over there, and all that tension is over there, because everyone is trying to claim a right to Abraham, the father of our faith. One group says, we're the descendants, and another group says, we are the descendants, which we know that Islam isn't the descendants because in their book, it states that Prophet Muhammad is Abraham and Ishmael is buried in Mecca. That's what their Quran says, but our Bible says Abraham and Isaac is buried at the cave of Machpelah. So we know that Islam has no right to it. It came about after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac lived by Berlahar Roy. That's the place where when Hagar ran from Sarah, 
She didn't know what she was going to do, but she had no choice but to leave. And while she was sitting there and she was afraid that her child was going to die, she just set him off and God asked her, where are you going from, coming from, and where are you going? And she answered God, I'm leaving from Sarah, my, my, my mistress. God said, go back. That was hard. But God said, I also, I hear your son. And you're going to have a boy named Ishmael. And his name means God hears. And after the angel spoke to her, Hagar, and told her to go back, she was so exuberant and said, she named God, the God who sees me, I'm going to name him Elroy. The Bible says that Hagar named God Elroy at that site because it means the God who sees. God sees your affliction. God sees what's going on. The name Ishmael, God hears. God knows what's being said about you. God knows what you're saying about him or not about him. We have a God that watches over us. We have a God that sees us. We have, we have a God that's with us. Just like God was with these patriarchs and matriarchs, he's going to be there for us also. Man, this is it, it, it's so much information in, in just this covering Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because, like I said, Abraham lived 175 years. What I found so intriguing is about that is, if you keep reading chapter 25, it said Isaac married Rebekah when he was 40 years old. Because before... Uh, his uh, Abraham was dying. He sent his servant to go get him a wife. She, they came back with Rebecca. But I think verse 25 it says, or 26, he was 40 when he married her, but it was 20 years she was barren also like Sarah. So Isaac prayed to God that she would have a baby because they still were the blessed ones to have the next seed for the next heir. So every time they were wondering to God, how am I going to be the mother of the next generation? I don't, I'm not even pregnant. So the Bible says in, in chapter 25, he prayed to God for his wife, Rachel, Rebecca, I mean, and the Bible said he was 60 years old when God gave him Esau and Jacob. Add it up. He was 60 years old when God gave him Esau and Jacob. Abraham, he was a, so if he was 60 years old, Abraham had us at, at 100. So that means Abraham is 160 now. It says it. He was 60 years old when he had Jacob and Esau. He was 100, Abraham was 100 years older than his son Isaac, who had those at 60. So he's 160. The Bible says he died at 175. Abraham lived 15 years to see Esau and Jacob, his grandsons, live. 15 years he's seen them. He's seen Isaac, he's seen Esau and Jacob before he died. God made a promise to him, and God lived up to it. We serve a mighty God. Yeah. He lived 15 years to see his grandsons. It's a lot of information in this. I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our patriarchs and matriarchs. Yeah. I'm going to close with this in closing. In order for you and I to have faith like the patriarchs and the matriarchs of our faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their wives, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah, I won't leave out Re uh, Rachel, I won't leave out Rachel, but like I said, she's not buried in the cave of Machpelah. These are the six that are buried in the cave of Machpelah. 
We must follow their example. In Hebrews 11, it reads, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. It can include Jacob because he lived with his grandson 15 years. The heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. That was God who promised her that. Therefore, from one man, Abraham, and him as good as dead, because he was 100 years old before he had his child. As good as dead, he thought, I'm not going to have no child. He was born as many as the stars of the sky in the multitude innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They were just passing through. They never did receive the promise, but they seen it from afar off. They trusted in God that they would be the heirs of righteousness, the heirs your descendants are going to be as more, as more as the stars on the sun and the other stars when Abraham had no children at all. Yes. They believed and took God for his word. Yes. Application. I only have three. We must trust God because of his faithfulness and reliability in his truth. All if right. God said, right. you can bank on it. Yeah. Yeah. If God said, you can bank on it. Yeah. I didn't know what to to. When I, would, when, I, when I came to a point where I need to change my life, I didn't have nothing. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in church. I, wasn't, I didn't even have a Bible. I just started praying, help me, God, help me. I need help. Right. For some of us, you may, you may be at a point where you don't know which way to turn. Turn to God and ask for help. Yeah. Ask God for guidance. And if you're asking and you're seeking and you're really searching, you're going to show something to God that get in his word. Because if you don't know nothing, you got to start somewhere. I didn't know nowhere to start. I wasn't in no theology school. I just started reading the Bible. Didn't even understand it. But I needed help. Yeah, yeah. Someone need help, turn to God. Yeah. Number two, we must believe in God's promises and trust in his character. His character is in, is in his name. Yeah. He told Hagar, I hear your son. Don't worry about him. She didn't know what she was going to do. His character, I hear you. She named God Leroy, the God who sees his character, his word. God says he's going to do it. You can believe it. You can trust it. And the last thing is, do not enjoy life on earth so much. I didn't say don't enjoy life. I said do not enjoy life on earth so much that you lose sight of your heavenly destination. They knew their destination, a place that God promised them. We need to follow their example. Our slogan is, we're not trying to get to heaven. We're determined to, get, to make it there. So if you're determined to make it there, determined that here on earth, you're going to live for God. Determined here on earth that you're going to do better by your children's side, by your wife's side, by your husband's side, by your family's side, by your brothers and sisters who are in Christ's side. Yeah. If you're determined to make it, determined to get there, there should be some fruit in your life. There should be some evidence in your life. You shouldn't be the angriest one around. You shouldn't be the one that no one, no one wants to see. When they see you, they turn and they start running. You shouldn't be the one that when you get off of work, your dog start barking. The kids start throwing rocks. You shouldn't be the one if you determine to make the heaven. If nobody likes you, nobody want to be around you. We must have faith like the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the faith of our faith. They lived according to only the word. 
They didn't have the example of Jesus Christ like we do. They didn't have a Bible like you and I do. They didn't have all these internet luxuries, anything. Just like I looked up those 52 times and turned over from this hand to that hand, I went to the internet. You can do it yourself. Google. 52 times have the temple of Jerusalem been turned over. They didn't have none of that. We have all of that. And we don't show no faith in it. We sang every day we love the Lord. He went to the cross and died for us. He got up on Sunday morning. You don't even come to church. I pray, God, that someone got something out of this lesson because it helped me a whole lot. That the book, of, the book of Genesis has a lot of meat in it. And it talks about the father of our faith and the patriarchs of our faith and the matriarchs of our faith. Get into it and read it sometime. You'll be enjoyed. You'll be thrilled to know that there's so much information in God's word. I pray that someone got something out of this lesson. I thank you all. And in and, and our pastor absence, may God bless him. And thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Joe. Thank you again for the opportunity. As a last thought, you know, just think about that verse in the Bible that says, Abraham is buried at the cave of Machpelah. Where that site is sit, there's a Muslim temple on top of it. And as a Christian or a Jew, you got to get permission to go. You're not, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. Abraham is buried there, Sarah is buried there, Isaac is buried there, Jacob is buried there, their three wives are buried there, but the Muslims have a temple on the site. Because they claim to Abraham, just like Christians and Jews, we claim to Abraham. And just, I mean, that's just sad in you as we look at the news. It's the second most holiest site because people want to, you know, just... But, but I can assure you this, their bodies are there, the patriarch, the matriarch bodies are there, but their souls are up in heaven. So we can be assured of that. That's just a place we go to visit. That's just a place of remembrance. So the Muslims, can, they can have that site. Because the true faith followers, yeah. our destination is heaven, upward. Yeah. It's not over there in Jerusalem. The Bible says there's going to be a new heaven on earth in the book of Revelation. So all that stuff we try to fight over and claim titles to right now won't even matter when Jesus comes back. He said he's bringing in a new Jerusalem. So all that stuff is going to be gone. You ought to stand up for benediction. As we look at the news reels and they only showing you their side of it. There's another side, the Bible side, the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Most Heavenly Father, we thank you as we get ready to leave uh, your presence, but never from your absence, from your spirit. We love you, Lord. I pray that something was said today. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for allowing me to stand before your people. Help keep me humble, God. I pray that someone receives something that would want to ask, what must I do to be saved, God? Yes, yes. We open up the doors of the church, but 
The doors are open still right now. As you are driving, you can still say, God, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. As you go to sleep and lay down tonight, you can still say, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. As you go to work tomorrow, you can still share with everyone that there is no way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Allah. It's not through all these things we fight over and treasure here on earth. It's in the cross, the blood that was shed. I thank you, Jesus Christ, for you coming down to clear it up. There is no distinction between who you are and who we are to follow and who we are to live by, who we are to be, have our example of. It's you, Jesus Christ. It shouldn't be nothing we should even fight in confusion of. Jesus said, I am the only way to God. I am the truth. I am the way. I thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ. As you leave, I pray that you would enjoy this week with your family. Enjoy your Thanksgiving day. But remember, every day is a Thanksgiving day to Jesus. Every day you wake up, you should say, thank you, Jesus. Every day you breathe, you should say, thank you, Jesus. And our pastor, Epson, I pray for him and his wife also. Be safe and take care of your wife and, and come back where we can love on you and you can teach us and instill in us more truth of the Bible. Yeah. I thank you that you left uh, Minister Job in charge and we're going to pray for him and his family and also. Yeah. Be with him, God, as he has to uh, take care of this church and your body. And you have to, he has to take care of your sheep until our pastor returns. We love you all, and we claim victory in Jesus right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You all are dismissed.